begin. A very big welcome to everybody who's joining our CAO webinar this evening uh, with Maynooth University. We're delighted to be here and to be able to present for you. Um, this evening, we are joined by the panelist, Professor Joseph Coughlin, who's head of the School of Business. And we also have Dr. Fergus Ryan, who's acting head of School of Law and Criminology. So delighted to have both speakers with us give the presentations. We're also equally delighted to have two of the students along with us. We've got Grania Honer, who is a law, current law student. And we have Craig Duffy, who's a business management student. I also here with my colleague, uh, Paul, um, and myself, Georgina, um, I work in admissions. Um, so without much, uh, any further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the presentations and the speaker. The first one to go is Professor Coughlin. Thanks again for being here. Thanks so much, Georgina. I just as a slight technical thing, can you just have a look at the screen sharing? Uh, if you don't mind. It... Do you want, can you share? No. Okay, sorry. Can you so just while we're, while we're waiting, um, yeah, here we go. Now? Here we go. I can share now. Here we are. That's it. My, my, minor technical issues happen to us all and we just have to keep calm. Isn't that what everybody does along Absolutely. this way? So thanks so much for that introduction, Georgina, and welcome everybody um, to this session. Um, we're going to talk to you about two different departments in Minute University uh, Business and, and Law and Criminology. So my name is Joe Conklin. I'm the head of School of Business and um, I'm going to talk to you about business and the opportunities that are available there. And I'm joined by one of our students, Craig, um, who's a second year student in our business management program, who will talk a little bit about his experience as well in, in the presentation. So we don't spend a lot of time on taking you through lots of slides on, on different programs necessarily, because a lot of our programs have some commonalities and business is a very large discipline. So what we tend to do in these presentations is speak a little bit about what it's like to be a business student and what business is about and why and how we create the programs that we do. And a little bit about the key features of our programs. And obviously you get a list of programs and codes and CAO and stuff like that as well. Um, and then plenty of time for questions. There is a question and answer function enabled, please feel free to put in any questions you might have and we can uh, endeavor to answer them either during or after the presentation. So thanks very much for taking your time to, to listen to this this evening. Um, I suppose one of the, the first questions people always ask is why would I study business? You know, why would I why would I do that over some other potential option you might have as a potential university student next year? So. We have these three statements, I just want to take you through them to, to explain a little bit about why we think business is central to the kind of way that people live and do things. So first of all, we would say that all organizations, no matter who they are, raise finance and account for their income and their expenditure, the money going in and money going out. Um, we see that with businesses who are trying to get money to get new products together, or we see businesses like the, the Irish government trying to work out kind of how much income it has coming in and corporation tax revenue and how it's going to spend it and will it help us with our growing bills for electricity and things like that. Secondly, um, almost every product or service you use in value in day-to-day -day life, so that be the laptop you're watching this on or computer or phone, you purchase that, the clothing you're wearing, uh, the dinner you had this evening or we'll have something to eat later on, whatever way you're managing your life, all those sort of things are things that are delivered through what we call a business process, promoted through marketing and organized through a management process. So when you think about buying something online, it's organized in that way. How do you find out about it? You find out through marketing of some way, and then, you know, it's delivered through, through a management process. We also find an higher education authority, the, the body that kind of manages universities and third level institutions have produced data that shows that business are consistently among the most employable in Ireland. We're only slightly behind the medicine and education people. Um, and it's because the broad nature of business, any, we can work, a business student can work in any business that they're interested in. Ireland as a country is very open, uh, very open to international and, and different types of business, but very entrepreneurial. So lots of business of our own, but also working as an entrepreneur in a larger business is also possible. And as you can see, they're very internationally focused. We've colored in these kind of words, you might've noticed because we feel that these are the key aspects of business and these are the aspects we, we build our degree programs around. 
So just to give you a flavor of the degree programs, all the codes for all these sort of things are all available on our website and also our prospectus. And if you don't have a copy of that already, you can get it online or, or order a copy from our admissions office and definitely something that would be very useful in explaining what we do here in Minute. So starting on the right hand side, we have our pure, what we would call internally our kind of pure business degrees. We have business management and marketing. And we also have um, international business without a language this time and entrepreneurship. So these are our four kind of core business, pure business degrees with different flavors and different focuses. Across the bottom, uh, we have our finance degrees. So we have a quantitative finance degree, which is a four year, very technical degree with mathematics and computer science to you if, if you're into to be a trader. If you want to work in finance more generally with a BA finance, if you want to combine accounting with finance or become a chartered accountant or an ACCA or certified accountant, we offer accounting and finance, but also business and accounting. Uh, you'll also hear a little bit more today about law. So we also have two degrees with law, law and accounting and law and business. All our accounting degrees offer full chartered accountant in Ireland and ACCA exemptions, um, very similar to other degrees in the country. Our newest degree for 2023 is a BSc in business with sports science. This is a four-year program, new to us, two-thirds business after first year and one-third sports science. And I'll have a special slide on that because it is a new program. Uh, so you can learn a little bit more about that. Last year, we launched two new degrees, which are doing very well. One is a business and languages degree where you can combine accounting, international business, management or marketing with either French or German, or Spanish, or Chinese studies. So quite a wide variety of choice there. We have students on pretty much all these variations, actually. Um, so students are picking their, their language at beginners or intermediate level, uh, depending on what you did for Leaving Cert or otherwise, and also business um, in that level. We also have a new degree, first years only, doing very well in business with global cultures, where you study business, but in combination with looking at how uh, anthropologically, how cultures grow and change and so on. So all these degrees actually are founded with very similar cores and backgrounds along the way. But one of the, the key ways to get into them, if you don't you know, think about not sure what you want to do, or you, you want to have an alternative route, and you'd like to try a few of them at once, you can do that through our arts degree. So MH 101 is our arts degree. Um, just to note that sports, the business with sports science is not available through arts, to con but all the rest of them are in one way or another by making choices within the arts degree. Arts gives you a huge amount of choice. So you can do business with up to 28 other subjects. And some of them are listed here, like you know, uh, accounting or finance or law. And other ones are things like sociology, new Aguelga, languages you could do obviously as well. Or you could do things like politics. There's a, a wide variety of choice or geography, wide variety of choice available in Maynooth. And it's definitely something that you should probably look at and think about as you kind of build your career um, along the way. So why, why is business? I've picked these kind of five different types of businesses. Top left there is a manufacturing business, engineering type, precision. Don't really expect to see a business person talking about that. But remember, those people have to be managed. There has to be a business process around it. Finance has to be gathered. They all employ accountants. Um, we see the same with medical and quasi-medical, um, you know, looking at operations and how things actually, this is actually, sorry, an actual operation, but in general, the operations of a business, such as a health service. So queue management, which is a big thing at the moment. You might have seen the HSE and the Department of Health are putting money into reducing queues by moving people from public hospitals to private hospitals. And that's done by managed through a business process. We might all like that to be managed a bit differently or a bit better, but it is being managed by a business process along the way. Then we have um, on the bottom left there, the aviation sector representative of the tourism and hospitality industry, which is a large part of what we do in Ireland. So we have lots of graduates working in those areas and you do specific modules and services um, along the, the degree and aspects of services as part of your business degrees. In the middle at the bottom there, you have the Garda Shikana representative of working in the public sector. So we have quite a lot of uh, graduates who work there and are focused in on building efficiencies and managing and marketing in that particular sector. And then finally, it's sports. Um, it's re represented a little bit of our new degree in business and sports science, but also the fact that many of our graduates work in sports and health 
type industries and the new wellness industry, which is growing significantly across the world and has lots of opportunities for graduates who can mix business with health and science aspects in terms of sport, for example, that, that we offer here in Minute. So the next couple of slides for me, one for me, first of all, about kind of different areas of business, and then a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll introduce our, our students. So management, what is management? People often ask, what is management? It's about organization. It's about ensuring that the right pieces are in the right place at the right time. So if you buy a piece of clothing, maybe a new laptop, maybe something technical from a website, which many of us have done and many of us did a lot more of during the pandemic, then basically you find that you need that delivered. You need it delivered. It could be delivered directly to your phone or to your device. So that's it very simple one, or it might have to be posted or delivered through DPD or DHL or one of these kind of people, which many of them became our friends during COVID. But effectively, it's a process that needs to be managed very, very carefully. You need communication, clear communication. You know, when is someone going to turn up with that part that you're really looking for? And if you're buying clothing for an event, and better turn up the day before rather than the day after. Very important to manage leader, have leadership within that particular process and to know who's responsible for what. And what we talk about really in minute is getting things done through and with people rather than leading people. Every, not everyone can be a leader. Many of us can take on leadership responsibilities as part of our roles, no matter who we are. But many of us also have to learn how to follow and follow, follow how to work with and through other people to get our achievements done. So that's soft skills around people and people management and motivation, but also process and hard skills about operations and te technology that help us to do these things. So I'm going to introduce um, our student, Craig Duffy, who is uh, on our second year business and management. He's going to talk to you a little bit about his experience on our degree programs. Over to you, Craig. Uh, thanks, Joseph. Um, so just a quick introduction about myself. Um, my name is Craig Duffy. I am in business and management here in Minute in second year. Um, I went through the arts degree, so that's MH101 for anyone that's curious. Uh, and I transferred into business and management in my second year. So just about the arts and the transferring. So a lot of people ask me and they still ask me, you know, why did I not just go straight into the degree? Um, and every time I tell them, you know, if you would have asked me back in the day what I wanted to do, it was between accounting, economics and business. I had no idea what I wanted to do. So basically the arts degree allowed me to do accounting modules, economic modules and um, business and management uh, modules. And then at the end of first year, I could transfer and the transferring process very easy. And um, it's all done online and it's made very um, accessible and stuff like that. Um, you do need to meet certain requirements. It's just um, for a business one, you just have to pass all your, all your modules, which is um, very, very, very achievable. Um, and um, the resources are there for you and everything. Um, so, for instance, some of the modules I'm doing now, um, since I've transferred, be the likes of international um, business, but obviously... My favorite one is operations and supply chain management, which is um, uh, which is which is my favorite one, uh, absolutely by a mile. Um, I only figured out this is my favorite part of business this year. Um, it's the best thing about this degree is that you're constantly going and digging deeper into business, and because business is so broad, um, actually being able to specialize in certain aspects of management is is really really fun, as I would say, interesting to other people. Um, operations supply chain is all about, you know, the, the, the work of a business, as you've seen back a couple of slides, you, you see a person actually doing an operation on a patient. Um, the best way to really, um, explain operations, um, for me anyway, was, um, my professor at the time, um, told us this great story about this, um, this businessman who came into a doctor's office and was then able to, he had no previous medical history, but just by looking at how the hospital was operating and how he could change things around, he could then get the doctor to produce two more surgeries a day. And for me, this is amazing because, you know, surgeries nowadays is life and death and to be able to do two more a day is, is amazing. Um, just some modules there that I do product innovation um, you basically businesses have to put out 
um, um, product ideas and stuff like that. And the operations will go in behind uh, behind the scenes and say, you know, first of all, we got to you know idea uh, create the ideas. We have to see what which ideas are are actually doable, which ones are good, which ones are bad, and um, then they have to evaluate them and and really see the process and steps behind all that stuff. Um, which is really interesting to me anyway. Um, the capacity management um, is all to do with, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, it's all to do with the kind of the supply and stuff like that. And um, there's a different model, uh, models and graphs that you learn. It's all so broad. And um, one great thing in MN212 that I did this year was a, um, was a simulation. So they basically throw you into a kind of a real world situation where you have to order in stock and uh, raw materials to then produce the finished goods. Now this is all done on uh, an Excel sheet. And when I say Excel to people, people get worried, people get nervous that they don't know how to use Excel. Trust me, when I went into first year and even when I went into second year, I had no idea what to do in Excel and how to use it. Now I absolutely love using Excel for everyday stuff. Um, even uh, I'm part of a lot of clubs and societies. And um, if you want to hit onto the next slide, um, so I'm even using Excel in them as well. So my advice for future students is keep on top of your work from the start. Um, I always do bits and pieces throughout the year. And um, continuously study and um, doing work. It's studying and work for me is no longer studying work it's doing something that i really love so don't see it as a stressful situation um but that will take the stress off assignments and stuff like that join societies and clubs it's the best way to make friends in college in my opinion um i am the men's captain and the vice president of the athletics team here in minute and um i love getting people involved just because i do athletics and um, doesn't mean that everyone in my club competes um, we're there to make fun, uh, to have fun, have social events, collaborate with different communities and societies here in Minute, um, which is what we're all about. We're all about kind of bringing people together and, you know, doing a bit of fitness in, in the meantime. Um, get a part-time job during the year. Um, I've been working since I was in sixth year, I'd say, fifth and sixth year. So I'm well used to juggling the work of a job and the work of college. Just make sure that... Um, your job is not overtaking your study and remember that your study does come first at the end of the day. Um, but it's always nice to have a bit of pocket money um, if you want to go out for um, you know, a meal in the SU with your mates, with your new mates in, in Minute, then you can do that, no problem. Um, go abroad or go on placement. So um, l luckily for me, I only got my email um, a couple of days ago. So um, I'm actually going on a study abroad. So study abroad, um, you can do in your third year of business and management. It is a year in a different country um, outside the EU. And um, that's the study abroad is outside the EU. The Erasmus is inside the EU. Um, but the study abroad is something that I applied for. Um, I'm going to upstate New York um, to do a full year over in America. And it's, for me... Studying abroad um, exposes you to a completely different culture and it shows you different experiences that you can't find here in Ireland. And for business, I think experience and um, experiences are very important. Um, placement is you can work uh, for a year and we have lots of connections. Um, Joseph will talk about that later on in the slides, so I won't talk about it too much. Thanks very much for that, Craig, and, and thanks in particular because I know you're interrupting your study for exams to, to be here this evening, as is uh, Grania, so much appreciated, and thanks for those insights. Then I'm going to continue on then with just a little bit more about the, the topics that, that you can study as part of your degree or specialise in at Minute. So marketing is one. It's about a, just explain what marketing is to people. I could be here all night, but let's not do that. Uh, about a process of exchange. So uh, the best example I can give you is giving up something you have for something that you want to have. So let's say you want to listen to music. You have a number of choices. You can download the Spotify app and listen to music and then pay for that by listening to ads. 
or you can go on to Spotify and pay money and listen to music without ads. So this is giving up something you have, either free time or um, uh, money to actually do something and get something in return. And this is how a lot of our free social media, things like TikTok, Instagram work. They use our free time, you see ads, and we might all be guilty on occasion of buying the odd thing we see on TikTok and Instagram, maybe, hopefully not as many of them. You also see bigger campaigns like Meteor rebranding to air as part of a takeover. And some of you will be familiar with things like the GAA has a partnership with Centra uh, and Super Value for uh, tickets, but it also uh, you see Little and uh, Ladies Football having the same sort of uh, links together. So it's quite a, an interesting way of thinking about how organizations link with um, businesses and link with kind of building sponsorship and getting those ideas. And that's something we, we, we have events and, and those kind of stuff in our business and finance society as well along the way. Another area that we specialize in is international business. So I suppose international business can be done between one or more countries is the definition or people or groups from different countries. So you can do international business and never leave Ireland. We don't necessarily recommend that, but you can do that. You can do international business without a language. Many Irish businesses are exporting now and exporting within the EU and outside the EU to clients and customers. You can work for those. One of our graduates of Business and French is going to work for a parts company next year, and he's going to be dealing with their French market. So just told him the other day, it, it is possible then also to look at multinationals in Ireland and to see, for example, how they are managed. So there's lots of opportunities for employment with people normally with things like Google and despite current issues, things like Instagram, Salesforce, et cetera. Even though they are letting people go at the moment, there are still opportunities in international businesses in Ireland. And some of the people are graduates who used to work for Meta are now working for Google. And there's opportunities available in those kind of areas still. But a lot of us are managing people across different cultures, a BU based in Ireland or another country. We offer international business with and without language uh, so, uh, on our degree programs. Entrepreneurship then is for most people, the activity of setting up a business. You might want to be your own manager and build your own business. And about a percentage, not as many as you think of our, of our entrepreneurship students want to do that. But what a lot of them want to do is use those skills in larger businesses and to be innovative in larger business and be agile and close to a customer. So you're entrepreneurial within a business. And in Maynooth, we have a social justice university. So one of the things we pride ourselves on. And in the business school, we offer a social entrepreneurship model, module where we look at how we might change society by looking at innovative solutions and help people in general and help society in better by looking at entrepreneurship and innovation. We have a range of finance degrees with some information in the slides, very technical, but effectively it's how the world of money and we all have to spend money and we all have to live with money works and the things we buy in terms of assets and liabilities and investments and so on and whether or not how, how the price of oil is going to change or the price of gas is going to change as we probably all suffered on in the last while, but also things like how your cup of coffee is funded. And where your coffee comes from and what's coffee going to if there's a big storm somewhere in Colombia for three weeks what happens to coffee production and the price of your cup of coffee so all those sort of things we're seeing that's driving inflation and various other things like that are all a big issue that finance and finance works with um, at different levels within organizations accounting uh, many people think if you've done it in school the junior search or leaving cert it's about debits and credits it's actually nothing could be farther from the truth you have to have a basis in that stuff but it's really about offering business advice to organizations helping them with expansion making business cases to banks to get money to invest in future facilities and in customers helping people understand financial products like pensions for example and you know a lot of uh, senior executives and businesses are often accountants because he or she who knows how the money works knows how the business works, is what, what our accounting colleagues would say. Um, we have a lot of professional links, with particularly with accounting and finance, so the major professional bodies, we're happy to work with those, and we have full exemptions from Chartered Accountants Ireland at CAP1, ACCA, F1 to F9, and also SEMA, uh, the Irish Tax Institute, and CFA for finance, our master's and undergrad are accredited by those. Uh, Craig mentioned that he had the option to go abroad, we'll talk about that in a second, but he also had the option to go in placement in third year, and we offer that in most of our programs, so it improves employability. Uh, placement is paid. Um, you compete for jobs, but you know we have a lot of jobs, and, and generally most people who want a placement get one. There are restrictions in certain industries where it could be harder to get a job, for example, in law, 
than it might be in marketing, but that's just based on the nature of those businesses. But generally, most people who want a placement tend to get one. Um, we have a wide variety of those. So it's a one-year placement on MH402. Uh, it's a 12-week placement as part of a four-year degree, and you could do that or a study abroad option. And you make a choice during second year. You don't have to choose in advance. And it's not compulsory. So lots of links with different people, Irish, Irish View, Allianz, KPMG, companies you might know and, and, and are know and, and, and sorry, be familiar with from, from home. You can also study abroad. Craig mentioned he's going to uh, upstate New York. So I think he's getting ready for the snow when it comes there in usually around uh, October, November, uh, something we're not so used to here, thankfully. But also um, we offer that in many other countries. So United States, uh, in different uh, states of the United States, in Canada, in South America, in Australia, uh, South Korea, China, but also an awful lot of Europe through English under Erasmus or non-Erasmus, depending. So you can also study abroad with a language. Um, so that would be typically be in France, Spain, Germany, um, or China, because that's the target language that you're studying. But many of those countries also offer business studies through English. So we have lots of students in France and Germany and Spain studying through English as well, also in the Czech Republic, Poland, and various other countries, Norway, Sweden, etc. Again, available through second year. We have limited places in each place, but typically most people get one of their top choices along the way. And we strongly recommend if you're doing a business and languages degree that you study a language and you spend a, a third year improving your proficiency in that language. It's, it's amazing what you can learn in that short period of time. We have a new degree, as I said, in business and sports science, uh, where you major in business and minor in sports science. So typically, first year, it's um, half business, a quarter sports science, and one other art subject, subject to some limitations, which you'd see on our website, uh, just in terms of student choice. And finally, uh, sorry, from second year onwards, you do two thirds business and one third sports science. It's mainly management and marketing. Uh, sports science would be coaching, exercise science, physiology, nutrition, and sports around health. We expect people to work in the sports industry, the health industry, and the general wellness industry, because you'll have some technical skills to be able to help people. You have a work placement or year abroad in year three of that four year program. This is the full list of programs that we have. You can see those there and on our website and on our uh, prospectus, if you don't have a copy of that already. Um, so just to summarize what you're going to study, you're going to do first year, general skills around marketing, economics, and accounting is in most of our degrees. You do more of those if you're specializing in those. Second year, where Craig is currently at, you do, he mentioned operations, but he also studies international business and human resource management and marketing to give you a rounded picture as a business person. If you are doing a double degree, for example, in business and law, you also do some law in that year, half and half. Third year is either abroad or on placement. And fourth year is where you come back and consolidate and, and kind of build your career. You have a lot more choice in that particular year and a lot of options. Some stand, standard questions. Do you need to study economics, accounting or business for the leading search? No, we, if you do, that's fine. We don't discriminate. But like if you don't, if you haven't, it's not a problem. We have lots of people who've never studied business before and do very well. Do you have to be good at maths? We minimum requirement is a H704 um, for all our programs. Uh, but it's a higher level is required for MH402 quantitative finance because there's more maths in that you're actually doing a third of a degree in maths. So that, that's why that's there. Placement are organized by the uh, University Placement Office. And I should say the H704 also applies to sport, the business and sport. More information, have a look at our website, email us on business at mu.ie and or search our uh, module description database. So I'm going to leave it there and I'll pass you over to uh, Dr. Fergus Ryan, who's going to uh, talk to you about programs in the School of Law and Criminology. Thanks so much, uh, Joe, and hello to everybody. I hope you're keeping well. I'm now sharing my screen um, and uh, I'll be talking about law and uh, criminology. Uh, my name is, let's say, is Fergus Ryan, the, the, the head of the School of Law and Criminology at uh, Maynooth University for this year. 
and um, uh, you're all very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, the um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what law and criminology are in a moment, but I suppose I might, might start by uh, perhaps uh, talking a little bit about why study law and criminology or indeed any uh, subject at Minute. And I've been at Minute now for nine years uh, this month and I certainly enjoy being here. Uh, it's a very vibrant and diverse campus. They're great colleagues, uh, lovely students. Uh, we're in a very pleasant convivial location. We're close enough to Dublin, but not right in the middle of it. And we have excellent uh, amenities and facilities. Um, I think one of the, the key advantages of studying in Minute is the flexibility that it offers. You could potentially from the start just do a law degree or a business degree. But I think one of the benefits of uh, Minute education is that there is also the option to um, just to, to, to study a wide variety of different subjects uh, together uh, to combine uh, two or more uh, subjects together as part of your studies and then to narrow down as you, you, you go along. So you can study, for instance, law or criminology with up to 28 other uh, subjects as part of your degree. Um, we certainly uh, have very supportive staffs, not just top class academics, but also dedicated and friendly support uh, colleagues as well and uh, very active sporting clubs and societies, uh, as um, uh, Craig was mentioning earlier. In particular, we've, I think we've got up to nine different societies and on, on campus so there's it's certainly a very vibrant and diverse uh, location albeit in a in a, a very manageable uh, small a small uh, town uh, not too far from Dublin um, in terms of our location, it's, it's uh, nearer than you think. Uh, Minute is accessible by a variety of bus services, private and public, and also uh, by train. Um, uh, the train uh, from Saigo goes through the Minute and the train uh, also um, continues on to, to Dublin uh, along the commuter line. So there's plenty of ways of getting to Minute as well. Um, we need to explain a little bit about what is law. I think you probably know or have a good sense of what law is, but I think that that often people have a, an impression of, of what the practice of law is like from uh, shows like Suits or Ali McBeal or um, uh, various shows that depict the life of these various glamorous lawyers. In fact, law is probably is, is certainly an interesting subject, but perhaps not quite so glamorous. Um, law fundamentally concerns the study of two things. Firstly, the body of rules that are recognised as binding in a particular society. Um, so we're generally speaking, talking about binding rules, rules that um, a person can be compelled to comply with or penalised for not complying with by a particular society. But it's about more than that. So the study of law is also about studying the system and systems under which such laws are, are, are and rules are made. Uh, so law is not just about studying the actual rules that result from these processes, but actually about studying the systems that give rise to the rules. How are such laws or rules made? Who makes them? Who interprets them if there's a disagreement? Who applies them and enforces them? So the study of law is very much the study of, of not only the rules themselves, but also the system that creates and uh, enforces uh, these various rules. Um, the study of law is very useful for a variety of reasons. One of the important things to note is that you don't need to do a law degree to become a lawyer. And indeed, not everybody who does a law degree actually goes on to become a solicitor or a barrister. Many people don't. There are many people in all sorts of walks of life today uh, who have started life uh, as um, as lawyers. I came across a health and safety officer uh, recently. Um, regularly, uh, you'll come across people who studied law in college and went on to do other things. But studying law is very useful. For me, studying law opened up the world. Kind of, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, I, I felt a much more limited sense of um, how the world operated before studying law. Um, studying law offers a very keen insight into how societies are regulated. And regardless of the job or the role that you have in society, whether you're a farmer or a grocer or you're, you're running a, a, a shop or you're running a business, you need to know at least some law. Uh, and particularly those laws that govern the area in which uh, you are um, uh, working. Sorry, the, the slides are running ahead of me here. Um, but um, law is relevant in, in almost every walk of life. And so understanding how societies are regulated and understanding how your own field of expertise is regulated uh, and how the legal system operates can be very, very valuable. But law and the study of law can also help you develop your ability and skills in a variety of areas, your ability to argue 
to reason, to persuade, and in particular to solve problems, but more pertinently to avoid them. Uh, generally speaking, lawyers, if you're a good lawyer, usually a pessimistic or at least a cautious lawyer, that you're, you're always looking out for what might go wrong and trying to um, uh, provide for that possibility to ensure uh, that you're covered in case something goes wrong. So the ability to solve and to avoid problems is something that I think we want to foster. Um, so studying law helps you develop very valuable skills and understanding uh, the regulatory environment, um, the skills of advocacy, writing and research skills, negotiation, uh, persuasion, critique, and the ability to engage in recent argument. Now, I hasten to add that, that you know, you can learn lots of these skills in other disciplines as well. Uh, so these are not unique to law, but I think these are skills that we particularly focus on in law. Now, criminology is something you might perhaps have a, a vaguer sense of, and criminology is actually quite a popular subject in Maynooth, we've over a thousand students studying criminology uh, at um, first, second and third uh, year uh, levels. Now, criminology is not forensic science, although there's a certain amount of forensic science and forensic psychology uh, as part of criminology. Criminology is predominantly a social uh, science. It involves the scientific study of what is defined as crime uh, of those who are defined as criminals and of the causes and effects of, of crime. Uh, in short, criminology is the study of the making of laws, the breaking of laws, and of society's reaction to the breaking of laws. And so criminology asks various questions such as, how does conduct become defined as criminal? How, what is the, what happens um, that makes certain activity that we regard as wrongful criminal and certain other activity that may be uh, disliked or, or considered to be antisocial is not deemed criminal. So what, 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 are, what um, leads um, society to find certain activities as criminal and other activities as, as not being crimes? What factors may propel a person to commit a crime? Are there certain um, social or psychological factors that mean that certain people are more likely to commit crimes are certain types of crimes. So why are, for instance, as a general rule, uh, why is it the case that men are more likely to commit crimes than, than women? Is that something physiological? Is it sociological? Is it cultural? What, what What's happening there? Or is it simply that um, certain uh, activity is more likely to be defined as criminal? Um, what propels people to commit crime? What dissuades people from uh, criminality? So what are the factors that, that actually stop most of us from engaging in crime? How should society best react? Are prisons the best solution? Or are there other processes. We have a strong focus in our department on in our school on restorative justice as an alternative uh, to prisons and um, uh, there is a strong focus on rehabilitation and um, moving people away from the, uh, the criminal justice system. In our school we also uh, um, have a project called Unlocking Potential where we work with uh, prisoners um, uh, um, in relation to kind of educational opportunities and uh, breaking the cycle uh, of, of crime as well. Um, in terms of the options for studying law and uh, criminology, um, there are a lot of different options. The key point is a lot of flexibility and you can study law uh, on its own as a single major and just do law, or you can study law in combination with various other subjects, including criminology. Um, criminology is not available as a single major, but it can be combined with a variety of other subjects. Up to 28 other subjects uh, can be combined with criminology or law. So um, you can study law on its own uh, as part of the LLB, the Bachelor of Laws, which is a four-year uh, honours degree uh, in law, um, you're covering law in a great deal of depth, um, and in particular, uh, developing various skills alongside the, the knowledge of, of various legal areas. You're also developing skills such as negotiation skills, dis uh, dispute resolution, um, and uh, for its mediation, uh, and also um, uh, skills such as as, as uh, advocacy, oral advocacy and mooshing, which is uh, pretending to be a, a, a lawyer in a court and arguing a case before a judge. Um, the LLB is just law on its own, although there are some electives and other, and, 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 and other options. It's pretty much law um, uh, on its own as a single major, but you can alternatively take law 
As part of the BCL, the Bachelor of Civil Law in Maynooth is a degree that allows you to combine law with um, uh, two other, up to up to two other subjects in year one and one other subject in years um, two and three. The BCL um, has a number of different denominations. It can be um, taken uh, as a BCL with law and business, which is very popular and a good combination. Law and accounting, which is a, um, a less popular combination, but a very, very good one to do because you're covering everything you need for law and everything that you need for accounting with all of the relevant exemptions. Um, BCL law and criminology is actually very popular. Many of our uh, criminology students also take law, although Others do, uh, for instance, law and sociology um, and law, uh, sorry, criminology and sociology or psychology and, and criminology. But law and criminology is a very good combination and the BCL law and criminology is a, a very good option in that area. And you can also take uh, the BCL Law and Arts, which allows you to combine law with, for instance, history, uh, Irish, English, French. Um, uh, in fact, any of the um, uh, um, subjects uh, that are offered by Minute, other than uh, German uh, philosophy and geography. You cannot combine law with German philosophy or geography just for timetabling reasons. I should mention that we have a, a shared degree with um, the uh, Catholic University of Lyon. In Lyon in France, this is the BCL LLB Etude Juridique. Um, this is a three-year program. Of, you, can, you can extend it to four years. Um, you do the first two years in, in, in Lyon in France and the last year uh, in Manute. And you get both a, a licence en droit from France, but also um, a, a BCL uh, from uh, Manute. But that is not actually a CAO entry program. If you're interested in that, you have to apply through the UCLY um, in France. And finally, as I've mentioned before, um, uh, you can take law and criminology as part of the arts degree. And in fact, many students start off on the arts degree and um, then if they decide they like law, would we'll transfer into either the BCL or LLB. So this is probably the most flexible route. Um, both law and criminology can be taken as part of the arts degree. And if at the end of the first year you decide you really like law or criminology, you can continue with them. Uh, in particular, you can transfer into the LLB or the BCL subject to fairly minimal conditions. Um, if you decide you don't like them, you can drop them and continue with uh, your other subjects. So it gives you uh, a, an opening and a, I suppose a certain amount of flexibility um, that if you're not quite sure you want to do law, um, you can start as part of start law as part of the, uh, the, the your first year experience and decide if you like it or not. If you do, you can continue with it. If you don't, you can drop it at the end of um, uh, year one. Now, there's a bit more detail in these slides and I'm happy to share them with anyone who wants to email me, fergus.ryan at mu.ie. I'm happy to, to share them, but there's more details on the LLB, the BCL and the BA. But the key point I wanted to make really is that there's a lot of flexibility there. And in particular, if you're not sure whether you want to do law, um, starting with the BA uh, can be um, a good strategy uh, because you can, whereas with the LLB, you start in the LLB, you're kind of stuck with law for four years. With the BA, you can test and see whether or not you like law or criminology, combining them with other subjects in year one. And depending on how you find it, you can drop uh, law or criminology or uh, continue with them. Um, in relation to law specifically, there are transfer options. Basically, if you pass year one, and you take at least 15 credits of law in year one and pass that as well, um, you may be able to transfer to year two of the LLB or the BCL. The LLB is usually straightforward enough to transfer into the BCL. It depends on the combination of subjects that you take in year one. Um, uh, but broadly speaking, there are various transfer routes that allow you to get from the BA onto one of the, the denominated uh, law degrees, the BCL or the LLB. Both the BCL and the LLB are approved law degrees. They cover everything that you need in order to um, take the entrance exams to become a barrister. And they also uh, cover everything you need for the law society. The LLB does it in more depth, but the BCL has enough law to cover you for the King's Ends and uh, the Law Society of uh, Ireland exams. 
there are lots of different things you can do with the law degree. Um, uh, both Craig and um, Joe have previously mentioned the um, possibility during your degree uh, to take either a placement or a study abroad or Erasmus year. Um, uh, we have a variety of opportunities for uh, study abroad and Erasmus throughout the EU and also in North America, the UK and Australia. Um, we usually have enough places for everybody who's interested for Erasmus placements. We also have opportunities for placements um, uh, between, effectively it's um, in year three of the LLB or between years two and three of the BCL. The placements are a little bit more limited and entry is quite competitive. In terms of what you can do with a, a law degree, well again it's important to stress you don't need a law degree in order to become a lawyer. There are, it makes it easier if you have a law degree, it's a lot easier to become a lawyer in Ireland, but it's not absolutely essential. There are other routes into the, into the legal profession. Um, but by the same token, having a law degree doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a, a lawyer. Having a law degree is very useful and is uh, certainly valued in a, in a wide variety of areas. So there are plenty of people who are working in all sorts of different areas in the public and the private sector um, and in industry who would have law degrees. It's very useful to have because it gives you a very good understanding of the regulatory environment, which is um, uh, very important in a, in, a, in a complex society to understand how um, regulation and how uh, rules and systems of rules work. Um, we are, I think, now the largest um, law school uh, or school of our kind in um, uh, in Ireland. Um, we have 53 full-time staff with a wide variety of areas of expertise and we have a growing uh, postgraduate cohort as well. Um, but it's not all work and no play. Uh, we have a wide variety of um, law relation and criminology related societies that are that are very active in organising various activities, both fun activities like the annual law ball, uh, but also um, serious activities like negotiation, the international negotiation competition organised by ELSA. So, um, so there's a lot in that, and uh, but there is more information, particularly on the website minutuniversity.ie forward slash law. But you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Minute Law or email us at law at mu.ie if you are looking for further information. So sorry, it's very much a whistle stop tour there. So I'm going to hand over now to uh, Grania Honor, who's going to talk a little bit more about being a student uh, studying law at Minute. Um, hi everybody. So my name is Grania Honer and I am a final year law student here at Maynooth University. So um, I originally started in MH101 doing the arts programme. So I did law, criminology and critical skills. And then at the end of my final year, I had the option then to transfer into the law degree into um the LLB programme and I have to say it was one of the best decisions I have made ever I think um, because the degree is quite designer and what I mean by that is in year one you don't have any options you can really choose from you have to kind of sit certain modules but from that point then you can do like there is a whole range of different degree modules sorry so like they're the subjects you choose and they make your degree. So I have to say, I cannot deal with commercial law. Like I just can't do it, but I really, really love criminal law. And I, last year I discovered employment law and discovered I really, really enjoyed that. So you can pick and choose nearly what modules you would like to sit, what modules you don't. Um, my advice for, any of you prospective Manate University students would be take any opportunity that comes your way. So um, Fergus mentioned moot court competitions. So I have done moot court competitions since I was in first year. And because of that, I actually got to travel with the department to um, Brussels to compete in a, a moot court competition over there. Um, and I'm actually the president of ELSA, which is the European Law Students Association. And we are in the middle of organizing an international negotiation competition. So we have students coming over from Georgetown Law School in Washington and different places like that to come and compete in Minnesota University in negotiation competitions. Um, I am also very, very involved 
in Manith University Canary and Kayaking Club. So that is, if you go to um, mulife.ie, that has the lists of all the different clubs and societies in the college. And clubs and societies, your main way of making friends in college, not really the main way, but it's the main way to socialize. And if you go and look at MUC, which is Manith University Canoeing and Kayaking, no, it's not a farming society, um, you will see all our different pictures there. So I am really involved in them and we're going to compete in a big competition between all the different universities in Ireland um, in February. So my advice would be definitely take any opportunity that comes because college is about making your degree unique to you and that is kind of it from me. Thanks so much. Um, thanks so much, Grania. Um, that was very, very helpful indeed. And uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Georgina. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks very much, Dr. Ryan and Professor Coughlin, two fabulously comprehensive and interesting uh, presentations. Um, and a very special thank you to our students, uh, Grania and Craig, as, uh, uh, as Professor Cockle was saying, took time out of their busy evenings with exams and, and so on ahead. Really appreciate it. And it's fascinating for it to see it come to life, brought to life by the students who are actually doing uh, the study at the moment and, and, and can ex can give us some information on their lived experiences of what that's like. So again, thanks, Grania and Craig. Um, I was just keeping an eye there on the Q and A. All the all the questions seem to have answer, been answered. But before um, we finish up, did uh, Dr. Ryan or Professor Cockle want to make reference to anything that was asked? Um, or are you, you you happy enough to move along? Is one new one there in law, Fergus, I think. Oh, it just one Just more. popped up. Oh, there you go. One more in law there, Fergus. Are you on mute? Probably yeah. answer that, um, you know, generally, because I think that yep. it answers live because it, it, it's perhaps something that, that is relevant across the board. On the LLB programme, what recommend the study time outside of lectures and tutorials do you recommend? And I think actually for, for law, it's no different than for anything else. People imagine that law is somehow more difficult than other subjects or demands more time or reading. And it isn't. It, it is. Um, uh, and in fact, there are many more perhaps I potentially demanding things that one could uh, study. Um, but generally speaking, the, the um, uh, we would recommend that, uh, let's say that you'd have about uh, 12 to 15 hours of, of, of class contact per week. There, there thereabouts depends. It can differ from year to year. Um, we would recommend that a, that a student should be studying, I, you know, at, at a minimum, certainly two to three hours for every hour that they are studying in uh, in, in class there, there or that, or that they're in class. Um, you should really treat um, a, a full-time degree as if it were a, a full-time working position. Now that doesn't, that means that it's, you know, you take weekends off, you, you make sure there are plenty of breaks and um, uh, uh, but what certainly you should be working on your studies from 30, 30, 35 to, to 40 hours a week. Now, certainly studying um, uh, law or business would be compatible with a part time job, provided that that part time job doesn't consume too much time. I mean, I cert I don't know what Joe's views are on this, but I would say certainly no more than 10 to 15 hours a week um, uh, for a part time role uh, in conjunction with the full time uh, degree. So just to bear in mind that that. It is a, a full-time degree and it does require a full-time uh, commitment uh, and so as I say for every hour that you are in class you should be studying at least two to three hours a week now that might that evens out over the years so you might do a little bit less at the start of term and a lot more when it when, when you're approaching exams um, but certainly I'd recommend as I say about about two to three hours for every hour that you have uh, in um, class and um, someone has also asked what is work placement like uh, with law and uh, effectively the work placement is um, it is a nine month uh, commitment it is a full year and it's usually quite intense so the students I've spoken to have very very good experiences but they say it is a very busy experience uh, on the work placement many of those work placements are with large firms um, and they're usually quite well structured as well so that you might be rotated between different departments in the larger firms so you wouldn't be all, always with with one particular department it depends on 
the specific placement and each each placement may be maybe different from the next but certainly the the work placement is quite demanding one of the reasons why we actually uh, generally require a two one standard of those who go on work place and those who those who are, are selected for work placement generally speaking you have to demonstrate a very high level of um uh academic um uh expertise particularly in, in in first year um so the placements as i know the placements are, are perhaps more plentiful in, in business but yeah. less so in law i think there would be some industries where it would be slightly more competitive like law to get a placement in a particular type of industry um for example but generally there would be more choices because there are more industries within yeah. law, within business than, than to go for but yeah that would be and I, I reiterate the points about studying um it's not just about class it's preparing for class as well so you get the most out of the time you have in class and answer the right ask the right questions um and there's lots of tutorials in law and business that you can have small group uh, interactions with to speak to your lecturer or tutor and get more like if you're struggling with something it's a place where you can ask a simple question maybe get an answer and stop yourself being blocked and and and, and so on um, and those are available across across the university in fact not just in law and business thank you so much professor coughlin and, and uh, dr ryan for taking those questions and, and answering them live as well so um yeah I, I i i believe that's everything for this evening again thank you so much for fabulous presentations and to the two students and to my colleague paul but a very special thank you to everybody who joined us this evening and all of our guests uh, we were delighted to be able to host this webinar for the CAO this evening. If there's any more questions, you can contact the departments uh, directly. And this session has also been recorded that you can uh, review it again in your own time, should you wish to, or forward it on to anybody who wasn't to be able to be here this evening. So thank you so much, everybody. Have, have a pleasant evening and don't hesitate to get in contact with us if you have any more questions. And of course, we'd love to see you all uh, next academic year and the very best of luck with it with the study months ahead as well. Thank you so much. Take bye care. Everybody. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye.